Patrick, can you talk about this matchup of a, a great judo fighter against a, a great wrestler? How does that, how do you expect the fight to go? Um, well, <clears throat> fights are chaotic in themselves, so you can't really expect that much. That's why we, we don't really go in with game plans. You know, we plan out the first exchange and um, we are prepared for the tendencies of the, of the other fighter, but we don't really know. And so um, that's really hard to say, but um, from what I've experienced in training is the better the, the, the partners are that I'm training with, the higher um, skill level and the higher caliber of athlete that I, that I spar against and people that I fight against, the, the better that I perform. You know, I, I rise to meet the, meet the level of my opponent, and so I expect to be better than I ever been in my whole career. And I started this camp still in shape from the last one, you know, the last fight I, I came in coming off two movies and you know, I did the best I could to come in shape, but I mean, that was like 10 weeks without any sparring or anything like that. And so um, I started this one in shape and uh, my coach is actually going through his notes from all the last fights and we realized that all my best performances when I had the shortest amount of time mm -hmm. since the last fight. And so, um, yeah, I was feeling like there's a lot of parallels between uh, this fight and my first fight, uh, I mean, and my fight with Kaufman. And I, I really feel a lot of the same, uh, same way. And I, I really did have some problems with ring rust in the last fight. And um, I really don't think it's going to be an issue at all. And uh, I'm pretty excited about this one. And I've been excited to fight Sarah for a while because I really feel like I'll be able to show more of what I'm capable of against her than I would against some of my other opponents. One of the things that I thought stood out in the Tate fight is no matter what was going on, your ability to you know exert your strength and throw her around and, and get her in the position you wanted to kind of shine through and help you win that fight. Do you feel like no one in this division has an answer for your your strength? Um, well, it's funny, you know, the judo and in in wrestling, it, when you take a gi off, how do you really just Find is, uh, how do you distinguish between the two? And I usually tell people, like, the throws that you have to muscle through are wrestling. The throws that happen effortlessly are judo. And so I didn't use any strength to throw Misha for that fight. Um, I did use strength to throw Karmouche in that first fight, and that's why it wasn't a pretty throw. But for Misha, it wasn't strength. It was just, you know, a decade and a half of just trained, you know, re reflexes. So I don't know. It's... Um, my, and my style of judo is, it was always really different. That's why I was so successful in judo despite being from the U.S. and where uh, we traditionally don't really have very good results is that I was always extremely unorthodox. And um, so even if they found like a really high quali quality, you know, judo player, they probably would fight nothing like me. And so that's why I think a lot of these girls have difficulty fighting me is that um, it's, uh, I'm extremely difficult to prepare for because, you know, my mom was just, so intelligent <laughs> when she started having me train. I mean, I, I, uh, when I when from when I was like 11 to 16, when I was training in LA, my mom would take me to like like four or five different clubs a week just to get a different style of judo every day. And so I would develop, you know, defenses and um, and have kind of develop my own kind of hybrid style that'd be very hard to train for. And then when I tore my knee out when I was 16 that was a lot of my throws I couldn't use anymore. So then I had to learn a whole new set of throws that didn't revolve my right leg at all. And then by the time my knee was healed, I had double the throws that anybody else really did. And so, um, and I spent an entire year just training on the ground when judo players don't ever really do any groundwork. And um, there was just a, a series of coincidences and, you know, uh, lucky advantages that I had that led to me to being very difficult for these girls to prepare for. Do you feel you'll have an easier time handling her wrestling versus her handling your judo? Um, well, since I know that I'm going to win, I think so. But, um, you know, it's, it's definitely easier for me to prepare for it than it would be for her. Have you brought in special wrestling considerations into this camp to prepare for her? Uh, yeah, I mean, my, my wrestling coach, um, Martin Baberdi, and he is an Olympic medalist uh, himself. And... Uh, we actually had a, a world champion uh, wrestler. What was her name? Where's Edmund? He knows her name. Um, God, I felt so bad, but she actually um, won the world championships and then had beaten Sarah before, and she came in and trained with us a little bit. And uh, um, you know, we, it's it's much easier in the U.S. to find uh, high quality wrestlers, and we've been training. I mean, I've been training with people that um, are 
I'm extremely lucky to, to have around, and uh, it'd be very difficult to find her for her to find someone in judo that's comparable to them. Strategically, do you feel like you've both been preparing for each other longer than this fight's been announced? Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, we started uh, we started at the amateur level at the exact same time, and so um, we've both been aware of each other since then. And um, I've been sure that our our paths would cross at some point. Uh, yeah, uh, I have, and uh, it's it's helpful. I mean, we're not dependent on it, but it's useful information. But more uh, about her personality than than anything else. It's um, I think the personality of a fighter matters more than anything when you're inside there, and because you know physically and skill-wise, it's you get so close when you're at that level that um, the personality is really what sets people apart. I think. In terms of Um, just from watching the um, Sarah's fights, it's uh, it seems to me that she's much more of she's much more cautious when she fights, and I mean she has a lot more decisions, and you know she she wins rounds and gets points, and that's just not really my style, you know. Um, so personality-wise, she's um, uh, much more methodical and thinks things through a little bit more, and um, so. I would expect it to be very different from the Misha fight, where she, you know, would usually comes charging in. I don't, I wouldn't expect something like that from Sarah. She might also be a little more mentally uh, balanced or stable, having competed in the Olympics. She probably might be able to keep that in check. I mean, in that respect, you're facing somebody a little bit more similar to you. Yeah, I mean, it's. I tell people all the time. I was like, look, it's not. A UFC title really doesn't compare that much to, to the Olympics because you know they they have new title fights all the time. But the Olympics could be you know one day in your whole life, and um, there's no amount of pressure that can really ever compare to that. And um, you know just what it takes mentally to to get through that is um, you, I don't think you can recreate that in any other environment. And so I expect her to you know be ready to go when it comes to the day of the fight. You seem like the type to criticize yourself in your performance. I'm curious what you thought of your own fight against Misha and how well you thought you did. It was a, it was an exciting fight, but I'm curious what you thought you did well and what you thought you could have worked on. Um, it's funny when I walked out, I thought I was really really slow, and um, I thought that I made a lot of really stupid mistakes. And uh, when I watched it later, it was a lot it was a lot faster than I thought it was. The pace was a lot quicker than I thought it was, and so um, and just the way that I felt, you know, having a 10 month layoff, it's um, I mean, you, you can't really do anything about that. You know, in boxers, they, they, they won't take two title fights like that. They'll take another tune-up fight, and then they'll fight if they have that long of a layoff, and it's for a reason. You know, it's not because they mentally are unable to deal with it. It's because that you, you cannot recreate that environment in the gym, and your body needs to adjust to it. And so um, uh, that, that definitely was an issue in the last fight. And just because I didn't feel right, then I was much more critical of all my actions as well. Well, and she's so, uh, she starts fast and, you know, comes right at you, so you, you had to wake up pretty quickly. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I do too, you know. I don't really hang out in any of my fights either. Will there be anything different mentally now that you've gone past the first round, just not having maybe whether you can subconsciously that pressure, that clock going, that, hey, I finished all my fights in the first round, is there going to be anything different mentally now that you've yeah. already yeah, I mean, I always knew that I get I get better as the fight goes on, and that the first round's actually my worst one. I mean, I was always like that in judo, and I'm like that, you know, in, in the gym when I'm sparring. But it's another to actually experience it and know that by the time I got to the third round, I was like, okay, I'm going to tighten up, and I I wanted to get more disciplined and um, uh, on my on my striking and everything. And so, um, yeah, I I felt like my my focus increasing as the fight went on, and uh, that really is encouraging, especially in an environment where I'd, I'd never been there before and I was ring rusted and, you know, like, uh, it's a huge venue. So knowing that I could deal with it in, in that circumstance, I know that it'll be a lot easier um, later. You know, I think the first time is just like the first round. It's always the hardest. Do you think that would, obviously she's better answer, but do you think that would in any way 
change Sarah's approach, being that, like you said, she's had some decisions, and it seemed like always the what everybody would say is, oh, my game plan is to take her into the later rounds, tie her out. She's never been past the first round. Do you think that going to the third round will change the perspective on you and possibly the game plan? Um, yeah, which is, it's not so great for me. You know, I, it works out better for me when people assume that I'm going to be worse as the rounds go on. It works out better for me when people assume that I'm terrible on my back. And, um, yeah, it, these things actually, you know, it works out better for me when people think that my striking is complete garbage because then these are things that they don't prepare for at all. So then it's actually, uh, it helps me out. There are people to underestimate me. And so, um, um, yeah, I, I hope they still find reasons to underestimate me in some areas. But um, yeah, it's that's why it's kind of nice to have the the fights end so quickly and have so little footage for other people to look at and for them to assume what they haven't seen is bad. So I'm kind of slowly losing that advantage over time. How would you assess your striking now? Um, terrible. Really? Oh, it's the worst. It's the worst <laughs> ever. You should just not strike at all the whole camp. Never. Uh, the worst. Uh, never. Oh. <laughs> I see you practicing your body shots, though. You're coming a long way in that sense. You're throwing them a lot smoother and a lot closer. Lucky days. I don't know. I was, <laughs> still, people were picking out shots. They, the they were totally terrible the whole workout, and then yeah. someone with an Instagram thing, they found the only one good shot for the whole workout, and then they're actually all crap. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you should see Edwin's face right now. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you've got the But thank you. <laughs> Four horsewomen going, you, yep. Shana, Jessamine, and Marina. Let's talk about why you kept those ladies around after the show and, and what you are doing for, for each other in terms of making each other better. Um, well, I like them. Yeah. <laughs> Which is another, like, pretty much the main reason is we really enjoy having each other around. And, like, uh, yeah, everyone was out of the house for Marina's fight last night, and I was just sitting there like, I hate this. <laughs> I hate sitting here alone. This is the worst. Um, and, and it's funny, like, whenever one person's gone, like, Shayna um, went to Singapore for, you know, the, the, you know, help out the troops thing, which is super cool, but it's, whenever one person's gone, everyone's like, where is Shayna? Where is Shayna? And, like, and then we get all, like, there's one of us missing. It's, like, the biggest deal. And then when I was gone, everyone, like, FaceTime me all the time. We were like, where are you? That's all we talk about is where the hell are you? You know, and so it's, it's funny. It, um, whenever one... Uh, one of the wheels is missing, you know, we, we feel the imbalance and um, yeah, we just, it, it's really easy to stay motivated when everyone around you has the same goals and it's like if there's one day you're like, man, I don't really feel like, you know, going to practice, I'm really beat up and tired and everyone else is like, woo, coffee, practice, yeah, like, okay, and they're like, they, they, they pick you up in their momentum and their energy and we really help each other in, in that way and it's been, um, really hard for me to really have like you know close girlfriends for a while it's funny i found a, a journal last night and uh there was a page in it from 2010 and i was complaining that i didn't have any girls that i ever saw in my entire life except for my family like i had no friends that were girls they all lived on the east coast and um i trained with all guys and it was only like my family that i saw and now i'm just like i'm just covered in chicks now it was like all over the place <laughs> and um it's kind of cool because I never, I never had any girls that I could relate to, you know? I mean, at the time, I was like, what mid-20s girl has anything in common with me? You know, I would be annoyed with them within 10 minutes. And so um, this is the first time I've actually had a group of girlfriends that we all, like, we get each other, we have the same sense of humor, the same things are important to us, and, um, yeah, I, we really lucked out. Like, the team dynamic is just, um, it's amazing, and it helps all of us. And Marina just won her fight last night via armbar. Are yeah. you truly creating armbar nation with these folks? No, I'm not doing anything really. It's them. They they really really work hard. I I have been in two training camps back to back, and you know I've really had to focus on myself. And before that, I was off doing the movies. And it's really um, you know the work that they've been putting in here. And you know Edmund's been really putting a lot of time into them. And um, I I can't really claim credit for anything. They they've really been. Um, handling it on their own and I'm just extremely proud of them you know and especially Marina last night she she really performed well and she let her hands go and she's showing a lot of progress and uh, we expect her to go pro in her next fight okay. um, Rhonda speaking about the uh, the four horsewomen yeah. I assume that that's something that came from Shayna as a mm -hmm. pro wrestling fan um, have you guys uh, have you guys played that up at least uh, in the house <laughs> we talked about 
who's Tully, who's Arn, and uh, how, where's where's pro wrestling on your radar screen as well? Well, it's funny that since Shayna moved in, it's like our group activity now is that we sit down and watch Raw and all this stuff together. It's like, yeah, it's like our little family time. We all sit down like, okay. <laughs> and um, yeah, and then the, the video game came in and yeah, and um, it's funny, I had some wrestling buddies. I had, uh, <laughs> so now like they, I, I gave it to, uh, I gave them to Shada and Jessica, and they they sleep with their their little wrestling buddies, and um, yeah, she Shayna totally converted our whole house into like you know a super pro wrestling house, and um, me and Shayna did have an ongoing debate on who was Arn Anderson and who was Ric Flair, but I was like, sorry, I have to be Ric Flair, <laughs> I gotta be Ric Flair, and then so eventually we came to the conclusion that. Um, I could be Ric Flair and she would be Arn Anderson as long as I had to be Goku and she could be Vegeta, which <laughs> I really didn't want to let Vegeta go, but it made more sense, you know, it made more sense because um, uh, I think there was this one line she was quoting, it was like, you know, nobody kills Kakarot while I'm around, you know, and she's like, no one can beat you except for me, like, and that's pretty much, uh, it makes sense, so yeah, with uh, uh, Jessamine and Marina, they're just like, you know, they don't really... Harry <laughs> Wyndham and... Uh... Blanket and Tully. Yeah, perhaps. I think I think uh, Justin is Tully. Hmm. So you're friends with The Rock, <laughs> and you like CM Punk. Which one is your favorite? <gasps> Lazy! <laughs> How dare you put me on the spot? Oh God! I mean, uh, I have to say The Rock. Oh. I do. I do. I love me some Rock. <laughs> <laughs> Will you be at Raw tonight? Sorry, Punk. <laughs> Uh, no, I can't. I I wanted to go so bad, and I did have the opportunity to go, but um, yeah, it's the uh, the girls are gonna have to represent. I'm in training camp, and just you know, I have to focus, and it is what it is. You know, I can go to all of them that I want sometime later in life when I I don't have fights or or yeah, something like that. Do you want uh, Punk to um, do MMA, or do you want him to stay in wrestling? Ooh, well. I kind of, I, I was really bummed when I heard he was leaving wrestling. I would love for him to come back and like have a big showdown with Triple H. That would be cool. So no, but no, you don't really, you're not interested in seeing in, inside a cage? Like, I know, it would definitely be interesting. <laughs> but um, I've just been following his storyline and career in wrestling for so long that I was just like, I feel like there's so much more that he could do. But I also understand him being uh, frustrated and fed up. You know, that's really what happened with me in judo, and I, I kind of left with a very sour taste in my mouth, and I definitely relate to him and where he's at in his life right now. Training with someone that was the exact same size as her. But that's the thing, like, no one really knows exactly what happened. So it's like some, some big mystery, you know? So um, I really can't, I wasn't there when it happened, I don't know what went down, and so um, uh, I can't really say. I mean, I don't think there has been one consistent story of what's happened. We can talk but more about just about women training with men and gyms I mean, is this just something that has to happen or like now you just said right now you just got two new partners that you can train with at your size is that is that just not normal for most women do they have to train with men well yeah i mean um women's mma is really small community and so if you find someone that's a really high caliber and around your weight chances are that you're going to be fighting them and so um it's it's hard for for girls to find high level um partners to train with because more often than not, they're their competition. You know, the um, it, women's MMA is still developing, and um, I think it's going to be some time, but before um, someone got hurt. Um, excuse me, everybody. There's an emergency. I must fight for justice. <laughs> um, <laughs> But yeah, I mean, it was always like that in judo too. It was, you have to train with guys a little bit. I mean, it's just uh, where the sport's at. And even if it was only girls around, I wouldn't want to train with only chicks. Because um, when I was doing judo, a lot of these other countries would have such, you know, um, deep and developed women's programs. The women would only train with men, women, and the men would only train with men. And I felt like I had an advantage over those women because um, I did train with guys sometimes. So I think that you need a little bit of both at the appropriate times. You recently did a photo shoot where uh, 
you're looking very, very vulnerable and very ladylike in some very distressed, strange places. That's not uh, recent. Oh, okay. So that was a mouse throwback Thursday. If oh. you actually looked at the cap, the caption <laughs> that says my first photo shoot with Brian Bowen Smith, when I've actually done three. Okay. So that was around, around two years ago. And so uh, I posted um, a, like a behind the scenes picture and a picture of a monitor. And then Brian was like, well, here's two of the actual pictures of the shoot. I'm like, well, if you already put them out there, then I'll put them out there, too. And um, I don't think many of us got past the photo. <laughs> yeah. We didn't, yeah. We didn't read the caption. Sorry. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah, those were for, from a long time ago. That was actually my, my first real photo shoot that I ever had. Um, so like um, the picture that's in Brian's uh, book that they actually ended up using for the Maxim Ha 100 last year, the, uh, the naked rappy one. Yes. It was that day, yeah, which is actually funny because I was like, I had something wrong with my stomach and I just felt like so like, like ugly and gross that day. And he's just such an amazing photographer. He just made me like feel like so comfortable. And like, I remember when I put that whatever thing on and that whatever chair, I was just like, I look like an idiot. I look like a stupid fat idiot you know, right now. Yeah, I remember thinking that I look retarded and he told me to sit in this chair and I'm like, I feel retarded right now. And I, it was the most awkward thing because it was like one of my first ever and, um, He's just, he's a true professional. He's a world famous photographer for a reason, you know, and uh, he took a day that I felt terrible and uh, made me look great. And uh, I can't wait to work with him again. And he's a, a true artist. I'm really lucky to be able to start with him so early in my career. When did you finalize the film, film deals and what's the schedule on the Durantara just coming first? Finalize? Um, well, I heard a little bit ago, but <laughs> I couldn't say anything and I couldn't really Before acknowledge fight? it. What? Before Tate fight? fight? Um, mm, no, actually okay. before the Tate fight, I ran, we, we, uh, at the end of the day, I don't really watch TV at all. And, uh, but at the end of the day we would watch like Big Bang Theory and just have like, cause I'd be like dead on the couch and just not wanting to move. And I just wanted some like brain junk food to, you know, look at. And then we ended up watching every single one of the Big Bang Theories. And then we were out of shows and then we're like, well, let's, let's find a new show. Let's find something to watch. And everything was like, well, let's watch Breaking Bad. I'm like, this is really depressing. I'm sorry, but I, I've, I've been fighting people all day. And I want to be like, ah, before I go to bed. And so we, we ran through a couple of shows and we wanted to find something lighthearted or whatever. And I was like, you know what? I've never seen Entourage. Everyone's been talking about Entourage for years. I've never seen a single episode of Entourage. Let's start watching it. And then, um, so being that I don't watch anything at all, this was the only show I was watching. And I was on like the third season when I... Uh, which was by the time I was after this, the Misha fight and that I actually got word about the, the movie. And so um, that was funny. I was like, I just manifested the shit out of that. <laughs> oh, my God. Like, I didn't even know there was a movie. Like, it was kind of it was kind of funny. And um, yeah, the, I heard that a little bit ago. And with the Athena Project, um, uh, my agent Brad actually FedExed me the book while I was in Bulgaria and I tore through it in like, 48 hours like yeah it was amazing and you read it like a movie and the funny thing is um brad thor who um who wrote the book uh i guess saw that uh one special that i don't know what is it god it was the one where they like they made me all cartoony you know what i'm talking about that one special that they did on me the uh, uh, road to the Africa? no it's like I don't know, they saw some special. And there's just, you know, really no way. So uh, we talked about it and I was just like, look, I'm in, let's find a way to make this work. And that was, you know, months ago. And um, so I had to put it out of my mind because I'm, you know, back in training camp and I really hadn't uh, been able to think, I just kind of had in the, in the back of my mind that's something that could be a possibility later on. And um, fortunately I have an amazing agent that, um, didn't that got it's his job to keep it in the forefront of his mind and so uh he was still uh going after that for me and so um uh was able to work something out with um with Warner Brothers which is really cool but um I don't know it's weird I have been avoiding talking about movies for so long that I almost feel like uncomfortable about it right now <laughs> uh, the idea like I'm like I wasn't even talking about a movie I was talking about a phone call and a book so that's kind of like you know a loophole but um yeah I I'm just, I'm excited about it. I just, I really can't really devote that much yeah. time, you know, thinking about it. But it's a really good book. <laughs> and the entourage starts in, in March, you said, and goes for a couple months? Um, it starts in the, in the middle of March, but, you know, I, how much time will be, I probably okay. won't be 
um, have to be like on call for a bunch of months and it's it's lucky that it's in Los Angeles so I'll be able to be home and I don't have to go anywhere and it'll be I'll be able to train all the way through it and it'll be like minimally inconvenient and um, yeah it's kind of more it, it'll definitely have all my focus later on but right now it's more peripheral thing that, that's going on that I'm trying really not to, to devote that much attention to. Rhonda, a lot of times during Entourage they would have celebrities um, on the show actually play themselves. Uh, are you going to be playing yourself as a, as athlete Ronda Rousey, or are you going to be a character? I think you should watch that movie. <laughs> <laughs> what was it about uh, Athena Project that spoke to you particularly, and also any kind of wish list actors you'd like to have on the cast? Um, you know what, honestly, like right now, I, I, I don't want to get too much into it. It's just I want to keep my focus on the fight, and... Um, it, I'm extremely excited about it, but I mean, it's just, I, I don't think it's good for my 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 health <laughs> to really be getting into the movies right now. I need to focus on the fight and, you know, that's really what um, is the most important to me because my life is, I really feel as my life is on the line every single time that I'm out there. So anything that would distract me from that is just, no matter how cool and amazing it is, uh, I just can't afford to give it that much of my attention right now. So Robin, Even talking about what the, uh, what you liked about the book? Um, well, you should definitely read it, but it's, um, what I liked was it's very realistic. It's not gimmicky or Charlie's Angelsy. It's all based on truth, and um, that's what I like the most about it. It's strong women in a real environment that they, these women um, actually exist in real life. It's not made up. Rhonda, with some athletes that make a transition from fighting to movies, they find out really quick that it pays well and I don't get hit in the face, and they stick with the movies. Is that something that's been on your mind? Um, well, I'm a fighter. I enjoy fighting, and uh, I was doing judo for a decade and a half for pretty much no money. And um, you know, if money was really what was important for me, I might be a stockbroker right now. And so I just want to have enough money to be able to do what I enjoy for a living. And right now, the main thing that I enjoy is fighting, and um, I, I enjoy it more. I think what if I get to do it in the more of a cyclical fashion and being able to focus on fighting for a while and now I'm having these two fights back to back and it takes a lot of attention, a lot of energy, it'd be nice to do something a little different and miss it. And so, um, and then by the time, you know, I go and do some movie stuff, then I'll be kind of like, oh my God, this is like, this is cool and all, but I'm tired of getting my makeup done every day and they're destroying my hair. And um, I really just want to get in the gym and I'm, you know, I'm tired of being like in a NASCAR pit where I'm just like standing there and like people are poking me all over the place and just like, I want to grunge out and not worry about what I look like and just, you know, be a bum in the gym. And it, they, they, they both make me miss the other and I feel like um, they both make me better at the other. When it comes to selling a fight, the dynamics of this fight are far different than the Tate fight, right? So uh, McMahon is more decorated as an athlete, but less people know who she is. Do you feel like it's kind of up to you to let people know how badass McMahon is? And is that a weird position for you as <laughs> the person who's facing her? No, I always talk up my opponents. Athletically, when have I ever said a bad thing about one of my opponents? If you think about it. I mean, um, even Misha, who um, is obviously not my best friend, I never said a bad thing athletically about her. I always said that she was a great athlete and um, I always talked her up in that respect. And so, um, but I think uh, 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 even though Sarah isn't as well known, um, I, I think it really helps a lot that this fight really coincides with the Winter Olympics. And so it's really, you know, an Olympic y theme going on. Sorry. And. Um, <laughs> Uh, I think that kind of just helps that the whole country and the whole world is really kind of in that mode where, um, and you know, Daniel Cormier, of course, is on, on the card as well and is another Olympian. And so like when people get Olympic fever, it's all over the place. And I think um, that's probably another reason why they insisted on making this fight now and so soon was because of the, the, uh, the good timing for it. Gang, how about two more questions on 170 and we'll get Edmund up here. Speaking of Edmund, can you just talk about what an asset he is to your camp and how great of a coach he really is? A lot of people don't get a chance to see uh, his work with you that much. Well, I'm a little wary about talking about how great he is as a coach because more people might be coming here and be taking my time from him. And uh, I'm selfish like that, you know, and like, I'm like Satan at his sweet 16. I'm like, it's all about me, you know, me, all the tensions on me. And so, um, but he is, he's amazing. He really, really is. He's my, 
my secret weapon that is quickly becoming my not so secret weapon. So would you not want him to be nominated for Coach of the Year so he stays a secret? Or do you feel like that's something he definitely should have been nominated for this year? I feel like he should have been nominated for everything and more. I, I really think that um, he definitely doesn't get enough credit. And I think one of the reasons why he's such an amazing coach is he doesn't give a damn about any credit. You know, he, he really um, invests his his time and his everything, his, um, what's the word? He's just so invested in his athletes that the return on himself is not even a big deal at all. It was a long time before I could even convince him to take any money from me. And um, he's one of those people that he's passionate about what he does, and he does it because he loves it, not because he needs the money or he wants the recognition. It's because it's what his passion is, and that's what makes him the best. Olympian versus Olympian, this is a big story for mixed martial arts, especially because it's two females getting that accolade. Talk about what this means for you as, as someone who's vocal about establishing female MMA and what reception do you want this fight to have, you know, win or lose? Uh, how do you want it to resonate with the public? Um, I really want their, the public to have more respect for not just the women's MMA fighters, but MMA in general, you know, and it, it started out, everyone had this kind of idea that MMA fighters were two guys that they found in the bar at the casino that they're like, you know, paid them enough money to jump in the cage and swing on each other. And I think it really um, represents the, the progress and the refinement of the sport. And that um, it's not just two chicks that, you know, were doing Taibo and decided to, you know, give us a try one day or their boyfriend was a fighter and so they got into it. And it's two girls that were at the pinnacle of their sport and decided that MMA was a better option and um, moved over to that. And I think... Um, it's not just speaks for the women, it speaks for, for all the fighters. And it's not that we're just Olympians, we're Olympic medalists. And we're not just Olympic medalists, but we're undefeated Olympic medalists. And we're two undefeated Olympic medalists that are fighting during the Olympic Games. I mean, I, I really don't think this will happen ever again. So because of your success and popularity, do you think that you have um, made yourself in the UFC MMA community like? more of an influence for women to become professional MMA fighters now? Um, well, I didn't know it was an option for me to even do MMA professionally until I saw Gina Carano fight. And so um, hopefully more girls see that women fight now. And I hope that my work contributes to that. And because they see it out there, they realize it's an option for them. And if they want to do it, then they do it.